This is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show. There he is. And he, he was there. He knows, right? The phones were dead, right? It, well, and I got to admit, even when I listen to national talk radio, it just takes one bad caller to ruin everything. One everything. bad phone line, one bad cell line. Now, I oh. do use a phone because every day at noon, I talk to my mom. It's basically, mom, are you okay? Good. We go on with our lives. So that is my phone. But even I got, even old man Ira got rid of his landline. I have my cell phone. I call it a day like that. For years, Big O, I used to keep my landline just to do radio because it was more reliable. But now that we have Skype and Zoom and, and your fancy you know, streams going on, that's changed also. So there's a place for mom for the telephone. So every day right. I call mom, mom calls me, I know all is good, and I go on with my day. But pretty much you better have them ty typing fingers out there. And I do agree, and I listen to some other sports talk radio when a bad caller comes in and you can't hear it, you know what happens. Oh, you hit the next button and you move on. Right, right, exactly. Uh, but again, Dizzy, you're more than welcome to spend the money, bro. You're more than welcome. The one thing I've one... learned about Orlando Alzagari through this ride of onside and here, if you're willing to sponsor anything, he's partners with you. I'm with you. I'm with you. There's no problem. Exactly. You know, because I love, you know, I love the guy that comes. Well, oh, wait, what's this with the sponsors? And I go, well, you want the show every day, you idiot? Right, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, Ira works for free or Omar yes. works for free. Or, you know, no, we, we don't work for free. You know what I'm saying? So it takes sponsors to do all of this. I can't go to the NFL draft without sponsors. I can't go to the Vegas Summer League without sponsors. I'm not going to be able to do the East West Shrine and the and the and the you know e what, the Senior Bowl and the Combine all next year without sponsors. We need it, man. We need it. But we don't need phones. But if Dizzy wants to buy the phones and pay pay for them every month, he's more than welcome. That's when we lose Dizzy, by the way. That's when Dizzy completely disappears at that point. All right. Um, he's not playing today. I, I, I already laid my bet because I told everybody, again, not a financial advisor, just a guy that likes crypto and loves to lay a, a couple of bets on a, on a game or two. When you're out and they just, it almost looked like, well, we'll put him as doubtful and it's game time. A couple of days ago, they said, he just said light stopped hurting him. Okay. I don't think he plays at all tonight. And I, I'm telling people because I think the late, late afternoon money is going to start coming in on the heat and it's going to go up to three and a half or four and you're going to get less value. So I took the three right now because I think it's going to go the other way. What's your gut tell you? Well, that's got a hell of a lot more experience. The Sixers right now are, are having their shoot around on their Camden, New Jersey practice facility. So we should have a little more clarity later in the day. But I think this is very much in the moment because here's the crazy thing, Big O. He has to play in a mask. But you don't know what happens the first time he gets hit in that mask. So there are two ways to go. You go through physical activity and shoot around. At least you know ahead of time, which is better for the team to know if he can withstand it. But it's not better for his face to see if can, he can withstand it because you could conceivably go through a game and not get smacked in your face. That happens also. Although as a center, it's less likely, especially when the dead man is playing. So you have that factor also. I do think he tries. I do think he tries every reasonable possibility that he can because this is desperation time because I do believe Kyle Lowry is back. Okay, he game. tries. He tries. But what's your gut tell you? My gut tells me he goes out there as less than 100% Joel Embiid, compromised severely. Again, back Ooh. from a concussion, back from a, 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 with, a, with the orbital fracture and the long-term concerns there. And also, he still has a thumb injury. He has a surgical thumb injury he's dealing with also. There is a lot in play. But honestly, when you're talking about late money, this game tips off at 7 o'clock. I think the 6.30 money will be the ultimate wise guys. I think people like me will be getting through the day. Is he playing? Is he going to play? And you know what? There's no reason for the 76ers not to slow play this big O. Why would they? Just like the Heat do with their injury reports. They'll let you know when they need to know. And and when we when we look at this at this matchup here, by the way, think about if 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 Alonzo Mourning was playing, was the center. There was no way they would start Embiid uh, tonight. Or if Dikembe Mutombo was the center, there's no way you would start Embiid tonight. 
in the uh, in the nineties and early two thousands, right? I was just thinking about the we or, or, even, about or even send out, or even send out Yurtsevin and with his elbows, hello, meet my little friend here, you know. Yeah, and yeah, but, but I, I mean, not that they will. But Yurtsevin would be doing it on purpose, whereas that was just part of Zoe's game yes. and Dikembe. It wasn't really that they were trying to hit you with the elbow. It's just that they were smart because they would keep the ball up high. And so the elbows are up here, but that's what they were taught because they tell all big men, don't keep it down here because yes. then they're going to steal it from you. Keep it up here, but then that's where you're the T. And then those elbows are swinging. So I'm just saying, it's just, I can't but imagine. Here's, here's the crazy thing, Big O. So. Joel Embiid does come back just as a jump shooter. Based on how the Sixers have shot in this series, he's probably one of their best jump shooters. So even there, even if you say, wait, that's not the full Joel Embiid. He's not playing inside. But their shooting has been so awful. I mean, Danny Green last game, one of nine, missing a ton of three-pointers. That even just that boost, the Sixers have to do something. Uh, it's not working with DeAndre Jordan. It hasn't worked with their small lineup. James Harden is limited. Max, he's not going to go, I don't think, for another 34 or 35. So they're a limited team. But again, this is not unusual. The Dallas Mavericks go nowhere without Luka Doncic. The Denver Nuggets go nowhere without Nikola Jokic. When you're built around a specific MVP candidate, it's MVP, MVP player robust. We haven't seen the real Sixers in this series. I'm not sure we're going to either. Yeah, no, I, I I don't think so either at, at this point. By the way, how does this whole entire Harden story end? Because I can't see Morey being that stupid to give him that contract. Plus, I don't know how that city would keep Morey around if he's stupid enough to give him that contract because that would cripple that team and set them back. And how does he even survive in that city if he continues to play this way, I mean, this is the worst city in the country for him to be on the on the back end of his career. Yeah, I mean, you should just see in the city right now that the Philadelphia Phillies let up seven runs in the ninth inning and lost to the Mets 8-7 yesterday. And, oh, my God, I thought the whole city was going to implode when I was on Twitter last night. So you have that going on. But here's the thing. I don't think Daryl Morey gives a rat's ass for this reason. He will just bail. He bailed on the Rockets when the going got tough. Boom, I'm out of here. So I think he gives James Harden the money. And it's like well, what Orlando Alzagari once told me when I was younger this summer. And he said, you know what? Don't like the Jimmy Butler contract because on the back end, you're going to get burned with a 36-year-old player at the end of that contract. And you might be right. I don't think Daryl Morey cares because if you give James Harden the money and he's not good in three years, it'll be see ya. He'll land somewhere else just like he walked out in Houston. Remember what happened in Houston. He left because he was burned out and didn't want to be a front office guy, family, blah, blah, blah. Two months later, he's here in Philadelphia. So I think guys like that, when they could be vagabonds and move on, they'll do bad long-term deals because they're not there to left, left to mop it up. That's the thing about the Heat. Even if Pat Riley moves on eventually, goes into retirement, moves out to Malibu, there is such an ongoing culture of people here that the Adam Simons and the Nick Arisons and all the people that are exposed to the front office aren't going to let anyone sell off this team's future because they understand they're all still going to be here. The right, Arisons right. will be here. Spolster will be here. Adam Simon will be here. Andy Ellisberg will be here. You don't have that in Philly. One day it's Sam Hinkie. One day it's Daryl Morey. One day it's someone else. That's why people need to appreciate the stability. And oh, you well, and not, I not the stability, this. by the way. Not just stability, and 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 you're closer to it than I am, but from an outsider's point of view, the other thing I appreciate about the Heat, and especially Pat Riley, he hasn't really necessarily stayed stuck in his ways. Right. He has allowed Spo to be his own man, and the team has adjusted, the franchise has adjusted with the times. Absolutely. And he has allowed... And, and that, you know, I, I think the white side experiment was the kind of the, that, that threshold that was like, yo, Pat, it, we got to turn the page here. And, and so it's kind of gone. And, that, they did. and to Pat's and they credit, moved he's on. allowed it. And they yes. moved on from Waiters and from James Johnson and Tyler Johnson, yeah. but everyone else stayed. I mean, everyone you talk about before their title on their position is 20th year heat general manager and president and right. coach because everyone's around here so long. 
And so that's the difference. The Panthers, a gazillion front office people, they're going to be players strong. They're going to play um, with analytics. They're going to go for speed. The Marlins, every year it's, it's something different. You go in different directions. The Dolphins, even with Chris Greer around, there's so many different coaches who want to play so many different ways. You have such a dichotomy also in their approach. The heated stability, that's what you're seeing. That's why, yes, there are the occasional blips. But for the most part, you have a way of doing things, but a certain adjust. type of player. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they adjust, and that's what I love about it. And that's uh, that's been the amazing. And listen, the blessing about these contracts to Lowry and to Butler now has been the findings of the four young guys, because right. that's going to allow that transition. And that leads me to the next question, because obviously Tyler talked a little bit about it in his All Star acceptance speech or whatever you want to call it, and you have obviously written about it already on the Sunset. No. And, and this has happened in, in other forms with other players that they've elevated themselves, they've been the sixth man, and then they want to be the starting player in the future. And that's obviously Tyler's next step of being starter. And while you've been talking about it, I've been thinking about it going, you know what? I can see Tyler have, having to play the sixth man role one more year but he'll play it with a fat ass check that he's going to get with a new contract. <laughs> and so he'll deal with it for one more year. And I think two years from now, you might, Jimmy might be ready to come off the bench. And then you've got a Tyler Caleb type of mix coming in at, at, at shooting guard and small forward. You know, I'm going to disagree with you a little big O. I'm going to disagree course. with you because that's what we're here for. I yeah. think Tyler can move easily into the starting lineup next season, along with Jimmy and along with Kyle. Jimmy plays big. Jimmy can almost guard power forward, so he's fine. So you And you'll have defensive presence there also with Jimmy and with Kyle. To me, the perfect world would not be convincing Tyler to be a sixth man, but to be convincing Victor Oladipo to be a sixth man. Tyler has earned at this young stage, like you and I, you talk to me, talk to me all the time about the next wave. This heat group, Jimmy and Kyle for now and PJ, but we already know the next heat wave is Bam and Tyler is the anchors. So you can sure. get that stability now. If you can convince Vic to come back as a sixth man, you have a logical guy to take over for Tyler in that role. You can keep the continuity. Now, Vic is different. Vic has always been a starter. He had a step back because of the injury. He obviously might want to start somewhere. If you could talk him into that, I am fine next season. Going to the starting lineup of, of, of Bam and if PJ comes back and, and of Kyle and of, of Tyler and of Jimmy in the first five, if I have a Victor Oladipo, because the point you make is valid here, Big O. There's no one else on this roster who meets the qualification currently other than Vic of being a sixth man. Instant offense, game changer. Sure. That's not who Max sure. Struess is. That's not who Duncan Robinson is. That's not who Caleb Martin is. That's not who Dwayne Dedman is. You don't have another one of those. Now, maybe you can go out and get your Lou Williams type or someone else like that. That's possible. But to me, that's the perfect solution. Give Tyler his time. You're going to give him the extension. Make Vic your sixth man. Vic is 30 years old. He turned 30 years old two days ago. So he's no spring chicken. This might be a second act. This might be like Dwayne Wade when he came back to the heat. And he flourished in that one season as sixth man. So I think a lot is riding on Vic. For as much as Vic says the right things, I do wonder at the end, you know as well as me, maybe more than me, the guys are still going to chase the money. That Vic can say what the Miami Heat have done for me, they've resurrected me. Oh, but wait, you're offering me 18 million Sacramento? Lots yeah, yeah. of things. That's Chris what we'll Bosch. Say. Chris Bosch. Yes. Houston. I mean... You know, he was ready to leave. Uh, he was ready to leave Miami, even though they had done everything for him. He was ready to leave, and they had to then, you know, juice it up a little bit more. And and so, yeah, no, I'm with you there. The only reason I say is because, to Tyler's credit, unlike Duncan, he mm -hmm. actually has made some some strides on defense. Not enough, but right. he's actually he's actually shown some. And I think but that's what he needs to do the next year is develop the body a little bit more and be a little bit more of a defender. And then you give him that elevating job because he will still be kind of a weakness. And that's kind of what exposed Duncan. Now that if you do have a two way player on the bench, well then use the two way player. And then that's why I would say, well then use Depot as a starter instead, because he is a legit. Except you know player. what? The starting lineup, I gave you a Bam and PJ and Kyle 
And Jimmy, you have four defenders on the floor. So you would only have one defensive wink, Lincoln Tyler. He might be better off as a starter. Right now, he's playing minutes sometimes alongside Duncan Robinson. Oh, my God. I mean, that's when you get into well, not, your defense. not many minutes lately. Yeah, well, exactly. <laughs> and for that reason. So in a way, you might be better able to hide, it sounds weird, Tyler Hero's defensive deficiencies as a starter than as a reserve. There might be something to be said for that as well. God, uh, you know, the beauty is they've got some sweet ass problems, man. Yes, yes. I mean, that that is the like best Eric's part of my said, all You have of high this. class, high, high class problems, you have no problems. Yeah, man. I mean, we we didn't even remember we started the season talking about do they have a pack backup point guard? Mm -hmm. We had no idea what Gabe Vincent would turn exactly. into. As much as we all liked a little bit of what we saw from Gabe Vincent, we saw even Max Struess, we liked what we saw from Max. You know, all these guys have just grown up so much. And Caleb Martin, oh, my God, I'm a, such a huge fan of Caleb Martin. He's, mm -hmm. he's as perfect a Heat player as it gets. You know, it's just you, you want to keep the – you know, I, I, it's, it's almost like I feel like a Dolphin fan. You know, you know how Dolphin fans want to sign every free agent? Yeah. They want to trade for everybody that becomes available. It's like it doesn't matter. That's kind of what I feel like, and that's the part that's going to hurt after this season because – there's going to be a painful loss in the offseason. I don't know who it is. You know, I, I won't call the the Duncan trade a painful loss, but I'm talking no, about the, the young guys that you develop. No, and, 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 old, and old guys, there's three of them. If you lose P.J. Tucker, he's going to be hard oh, to replace because yeah. Jay Crowder was hard to replace last season. So let's not understate that. That's one. If you lose Caleb Martin because the most you can offer him is yes. $44 million over four. That would be a degree of loss also. And if you lose Victor Oladipo after working so diligently on his comeback, that'll hurt also. So I don't think this is an offseason where you might be asking me, Big O, we're sitting there in Vegas Summer League doing our Accurate Pembroke Pines reports. Hey, Ira, who are they getting? To me, the question is going to be, Big O, can they retain? If the Heat can retain, hell, they're the number one seed. They look like they're going to the Eastern Conference Finals. Sometimes you need a summer of stability. You have your summers where you sign your Kyle Lowry's, where you get your Jimmy Butler's. Sometimes you can just sit back and go, you know what? We're pretty goddamn good. That's okay. what the Suns did. That's why they're in a good place again. I'm with you. All right. You, you like them tonight? I like them tonight, but I like them more when they see what Joel Embiid looks like, if he's out there, and what he might look like. I be they beat him with or without Joel Embiid. It's just he's not going to be himself either. I just... I just think they're, they that's going to be tough for him. I, I don't think he plays anyway, but well, we will okay. see. Uh, what are you working on the Sun Sentinel down the stretch here leading up to game time so folks Bunch, can bunch of stories. Um, I posted a story at sunsentinel.com this morning how because Bam Adebayo was so versatile, it always seems the one thing he doesn't do, people pick on. So when he's passing and defending, they go, why isn't he scoring? When he's scoring and he's passing, why isn't he defending? It's almost like he does too much too well, so there's always a box you can look and go, well, what about that box? He's almost a prisoner of of his own versatility. Have a story on that. I'm uh, doing a story on Dwayne Dedman, going to post soon about how he's shown he can play against smaller lineups. He says, Look, I guard Bam in practice every day. I'm getting enough practice guarding against quick guys. He's had his moment in the series. He did certainly sure. in the first quarter last game. So I'm working on that. And all day we'll be updating the Heat injury report. Kyle Lowry, six players questionable. And of course, the Joel Embiid watch will go right till game time. So check back at sunsentinel.com. If there's an update, I'll try to have it for you. And if you're listening on the podcast, Ira Heat Beat on Twitter, so you can stay in tune and three times a week here exclusively on this platform. Ira, have a fantastic weekend and enjoy the basketball. Catch you next week. Thank you, Big O. You got it. That is Ira Winderman and our Acura of Pembroke Pines Miami Heat Report. There This is the